united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning. Welcome to United with Christ. I'm so glad you've joined us today on this St. Patrick's Day. And uh, I, my name is Kathleen. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Um, I am the director of Celebrate Recovery uh, from Coronado Baptist Church. And I have a wonderful guest for you today um, who also is associated with Celebrate Recovery. Um, first, I want to um, remind you to um, go to our prayer line, which is at 915-532-8518, uh, and call and ask for anything you want prayer about. We have someone manning the telephone lines, and they are happy to pray with you about whatever it is that you need prayer about. We know that there's power in prayer. So uh, my guest today is um, Deb Watkins, and before we get started, I would like to say an opening prayer. Please join me. Father God, I just worship you and I praise your holy name, Lord, and I thank you for uh, this, this day, this beautiful day, and for this opportunity, and for my beautiful guest and my beautiful friend, Deb Watkins. Lord, I just pray that you will be with each and every one of us, those that are watching and those of us here, uh, that you will bless us, Lord, with your uh, grace and your mercy. Lord, we, can, we are nothing without you. And I just pray that you would flood this place with your grace and mercy for us, Lord. Please be with us throughout the weekend, and um, I pray that you will help us to always keep you at the forefront and keep you at the center of our lives, Lord. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. So my guest is Deb Watkins. Welcome, Deb. I'm so glad to have you here. This is just such an uh, exciting time for me. You and I go way, go way back. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. How long has it been since you started Celebrate Recovery? Um, it's uh, about 13 and a half 13 years. 13 years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Deb is a transplant from Massachusetts. Uh, you'll be able to pick that up with her accent, um, which we always tease her about, and she laughs right along with us. <laughs> Park the car. We don't hear too many uh, Bostonian accents here in El Paso, but we adore Deb, and she's got such a great sense of humor. She lets us tease her. Um, so uh, tell us about how, what, just a little bit about what brought you to El Paso and then how you started coming to Celebrate Recovery. What led you to come to Celebrate Recovery? Well, um, I worked for a telecommunications company back in Massachusetts, and uh, they were going to close our office. And uh, 12 of us, me and 11 co-workers, were given the opportunity to move to El Paso. And uh, this was a big move because my whole family is back there um, and my grandchildren. And now I'm a great grandma, so they're back there too. But um, in retrospect, the Lord sent me to the desert for healing. Um, I was helping a friend look for a, um, some kind of treatment or uh, rehab uh, to help with a, a situation. And uh, I found that Celebrate Recovery was at a church that I just started going to. So I was like ecstatic. It was a God thing. And um, I went with this friend and I enjoyed. And we have a thing where we go around and we introduce ourselves and we, we explain what we're there for. And my, my excuse was always, I'm here to support my friend. And then the Lord, after I'd say a month, the Lord put on me and said, you have all these issues that you internalize and you thought that you were fine with, but no, you need healing too. Mm -hmm. So that was 
my friends present to me mm. was that I found Celebrate Recovery and I dealt with all those issues that I had. Tell us a little bit about the history of your issues. Tell us if you don't mind. I know no. it's, um, it's painful, but. I'm the oldest of six children. Uh, my father was a alcoholic. Um, he was a working alcoholic. He actually worked for the state of Massachusetts. And my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Um, my dad was very abusive to my mother, and I was her rescuer. I, I was the oldest, and I would hear, you know, the situations at night. And I would always yell at my father to leave my mother alone. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it grew... It grew to the fact that uh, I hated my father. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was growing up, um, I want to say I was probably about 12 or 13, I was being sexually molested by a family member. And um, that continued all through junior high school. Mm. And um, I think it was because of attention, plus I drank. I, I started drinking alcohol at a very young age, and it probably was to mask the situations that were going on in my home. Uh, looking back on it, you know, um, of course, through the years, I forgave my father because I understood that he had issues. And yeah, nobody wants to drink or do drugs or anything like that. You know, it's an internal thing that you, you need healing from. Yeah. And uh, a big part of my school time was not enjoyable to me. Mm -hmm. um, but when I came to El Paso, because I knew the Lord when I was about 20. Okay. I, I, I had my child... I was a senior in high school. Back in the 70s, you don't do those things, but I, I happened to uh, get pregnant with someone that I shouldn't have been with, but you know, it was God's, God's plan for me to have a child at a young age. Um, and um, it just kind of snowballed through the years that... Um, I can look back and, and see that God had me mm -hmm. in his hand mm -hmm. because of all the, the stuff that I had been through. You know, I drank, I did drugs, you know, I'd been homeless. Uh, you know, uh, a house was a chaotic house. Mm -hmm. I was just repeating the cycle. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens a lot is mm -hmm. if you don't take it to heart of how you grew up mm -hmm. and the reason why you grew up that mm -hmm. way, the cycle just continues. Mm -hmm. And as I'm older and I look back on that, I wish that things had been different, but God put me with Celebration Place. I work with kids who probably, if I had had that program when I was a kid, I would need Celebrate Recovery. God's grace and mercy, I would have learned yeah. how to deal with my emotions, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. way I dealt with things, mm -hmm. you know, anger and, you know, violence and mm -hmm. drinking and mm -hmm. drugging and just, you know, doing a lot of wrong things. And probably that a I lot did. of feelings of uh, lack of self worth. Yeah, low self esteem. Yeah. I really did. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't valued. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I was worth anything. Right. You know, but I love working with the kids because I see the potential mm -hmm. for them, even though they, their parents may be struggling, we, we teach them how to have emotions yes. and how to deal with it. Yes. And with God as the center exactly. of that learning. Exactly. You know? Um, I grew up, my mom married a very 
a very uh, strict Christian man. Um, my stepdad, he was wonderful. Um, but I didn't live with them. Mm. I was already on my own. Okay. So I didn't walk with the Lord. Uh -huh. I came to El Paso, like I said, God brought me to the desert for healing. <laughs> so since I've been here, I'm very involved with my first love is Celebrate Recovery and Celebration Place. I know I took a hiatus during COVID, but uh, I miss the kids. The kids miss me. They miss you. And, and, and I just love working with them and seeing the healing, mm -hmm. not only in the kids, but in the families. The, the, the testimonies of many that have come to us celebrate recovery mm -hmm. and what they're doing now. Yes. They're spreading the word of God. Yes. They're living the life that God wants us to live. Exactly. You know? Just just for clarification, for if, if this was your first time of tuning in, um, Celebration Place is um, a is a program that's an offshoot of Celebrate Recovery, but it's for children ages first grade to fifth grade. And um, we have several children that are in that group, and they are there because their parents attend Celebrate Recovery. And that's actually a, a requirement um, because they were not a babysitting service or a place where they can just drop kids off to Celebration Place. They're there because we want to treat the whole family. So. Parents are coming to Celebrate Recovery. The first through fifth graders are going into Celebration Place. We also have a nursery uh, for the ones that are under first grade. Uh, and Deb is the leader of the Celebration Place, and she has a couple of uh, wonderful co-leaders that help her out yes. in, that, in that group. Uh, and Deb, you just have a real heart for the children, oh. for, I guess because of the way you were raised, and you want to do everything you can to give them that support that you didn't have when exactly. you were a child. Exactly. We have a regular curriculum, right? It's yes, a... yes. Whatever their, their parents are studying, because Celebrate Recovery either has a testimony or a teaching. We have a teaching every week. Uh, like uh, last, last week, they watched a movie that was based on hope. How do we have hope? And their parents were also learning how they could have hope. So it's all in tune yeah. to the family. Right. And they have journals that they fill out. We ask them how their weeks are. Was it sad? Was it happy? And, and they get to describe their week. And they don't have to share. We go around and ask them, you know, how was your week? Mm -hmm. You know, anything special happened? And if they don't want to share, that's fine with us. Mm -hmm. We ask, and then there's questions based on the lessons that we do each week mm -hmm. that they fill them out, mm -hmm. and that's their own wording. Yeah. We don't try to make them say things that we want to mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. That's how the kids want to, um, you know, yeah, say to express their things. Themselves. Yeah, and, and what we do is at the end of the night, and they have crafts, of course, we have snacks because they always go, Miss Deb, what do we have for snacks tonight? You know, kids are. Send those kids I home full of them. sugar. I, <laughs> I, I just love them, you know. But, um, yeah, at the end of the night, they take those journal home, and we ask the parents to go through what the kids have studied, yeah. which falls in line with what they have studied. Yes. So. You know, parents nowadays are busy, and we understand that. But just take 10 minutes yeah. to sit with your child mm -hmm. and, and say, okay, you did this. You know, that makes so much of oh, a difference. Because the it children does. need to be heard. They want yeah. to be heard. And that's yeah. what's lacking, I think, in our families and our homes a lot yep. today. And why there are some of the problems that uh, there are is because children don't feel like they have an out. They have yep. no one sometimes depending on what's going on in the parents' household. And it doesn't have to mean that the parents have a drug mm -hmm. issue or an alcohol issue. Mm -hmm. It could just mean maybe they are um, uh, overworked, overwhelmed. Or, yeah, overwhelmed. overworked or overwhelmed. Uh, yeah. A lot of single parents out there nowadays. Yeah. And um, they just don't take the time to spend with their children. I was yeah. a single mom myself for a number mm -hmm. of years and had to learn that I needed to spend that time separate from everything else I was doing. I had to yes. carve out some time and spend 
even if it was just 30 minutes in the evening, mm -hmm. to give my uh, son, he was the one that, uh, he was my youngest, and um, that was when I realized that I really needed to spend some quality time and just listening to him. Um, right. listening to what was going on in his day and so forth because children want to be heard. We hear testimonies all the time where people say, I felt invisible as a child. Mm -hmm. I felt like nobody noticed me, nobody cared about me. Right. I didn't have anything of value to say. Right. And so we got to give our kids that and you do a beautiful job of that with Thank the children. And, and we tell them that, you know, who, who do you go to for help? Sometimes your parents are too busy. So who's always available, yes, God. Yes, that's right. That's and right. That's, that's the center of our teaching is Christ. They're learning about Christ. They're learning about how to control their emotions or learn how to deal with to deal certain with things. Mm -hmm. and, and I just love my kids. <laughs> I love my kids. <laughs> and they know it because they, they, they love you back. And yet you discipline them. I've been with you when you get on to them. Yeah, and, I'm pretty and you stern. don't let them... You don't get them, let them get away with anything, and, and that's that's what I love about you, Deb, is that you have a good balance. And I, as parents, that's what any of us need to do is have a good balance. If we're too far off one way or the other, that doesn't help the child. If we're mm. too strict or if we're too mm. lenient, it does not help the child. We have yeah. to be straight down the we middle and, them in. and teach them <laughs> teach them the right things. You know, the Bible says that train a child up in the way he should go, and he yeah. will return to it. Yeah, he won't depart from it. Right. And so uh, this is such good teaching that you're giving the kids. And, I love it. Um, uh, and it's beautiful that, you know, CR, Celebrate Recovery, has a program mm -hmm. where it causes the parents and the kids to talk and use the same language. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about the same uh, lessons that are right. being taught. And right. they can talk about it as they're driving home or over the weekend or right. what have you. Right. And the kids are not just kind of stuck out there on their own. Right. So um, give us a little bit about uh, what, what you're doing right now um, to, um, in terms of giving back to the community. I know you're very involved in a lot of things. You have a huge heart, size of Texas <laughs> and Massachusetts put together. <laughs> well, I'm very involved in the church. Um, I do go to uh, the WOWs, which is the Women of the Word. I love doing that. Um, on my Sunday school class, I send out the emails, the lessons for Sunday. I try to, I try to help in the church because yeah. that's where my center is. Yeah. You know, that gives me the most joy is, is in the church uh -huh. and, and dealing with different things. Um, I also, um, friends, I mean, if somebody needs something, I try to, I try to be there. Yeah. I try. I, I'm not, you know, perfect, and nobody is perfect. But I try to help where I can. Yes, you do. You're, you're the first one usually to to help somebody out, and we're just so grateful for that. Well, Deb. I give the glory to God for that. I Good. mean, yes. He's the one that provides yes. me with the tools or. Yep. The shoulder or the ear or, or the, the finance, mouth. Or the finances or uh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. He, he is the one. He just That's he true. just provides everything. Yeah. And now uh, what we've been doing is uh, we've been able to get you enough help in Celebration Place yes. that uh, you're able to come to the regular oh. CR groups uh, for the adults yes. at least once a month. Yes. And, Thank uh, you, Norma. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Derek, Derek. Terrell. Yeah. Um, who else am I missing? Well, I have an assortment of, <laughs> of helpers. Patricia and her friends. See, if the kids are 12 or above Zoe, um, these are my kids that I had when they were little, and now they've grown up, so they've come back to give back, and they're helping mm -hmm. me with the the kids of the ages. Yeah. So that's that's a blessing to me is they think enough of the program yeah. that they want to come back and help us. Because they've grown up in the program. Yes, they could probably exactly. teach the program. <laughs> yeah, they probably could because it's the same one yeah. every year. They've come but so yeah. Long. And I thank God that I do get that one time a month mm -hmm. to go be with grown ups yeah. and, and 
you know, because I still struggle with a lot of things. Yeah, sure. You know, I have a lot of health problems that are going on now. And, and I'm just so thankful, mm -hmm. you know, to be a part of the women's group, mm -hmm. you know. And I thank you for the opportunity to be there and, you know, help if I can, too. Well, we Not only that support yeah we want to give you that support yeah. because we can't help others unless we ha get the help exactly. that we need for ourselves and yeah. it keeps you tuned in to celebrate recovery yeah. and to what's going on with celebrate recovery and and you need help with with your things because we're never going to get out of this life without having to deal with problems and exactly. i feel sad for people who come to celebrate recovery and after they've heard all the lessons in one year's time they say oh okay there, i'm done i'm i'm fixed i'm ready we to go we're solved. and unfortunately um you know we hear back sometime later that maybe they you know kind of had a relapse or fell apart because you've just got to stay plugged in you got to stay plugged in to, mm -hmm. to god uh, it's yep. it's not church. Celebrate Recovery is not, not church. church. Uh, no. It's in addition to your church attendance, and church attendance is very important. Deb and I go to the same church, Coronado Baptist. Um, and so we have our Coronado Baptist family. We have our Celebrate yes. Recovery family, and yes. that's really what it is. It's yes. a family. Yes. We support each other. We pray for each other. We yes. help each other wherever we can. Yes. Um, and, um, but... Uh, yeah, it just makes me sad when people think that, well, I've heard all 12 lessons and there I'm done. And uh, no, I mean, yeah. you just got to stay plugged in because things come up that yes. you may not even be anticipating. Exactly. And um, you don't want to find yourself in a place of thinking, oh, dear, where do I go? What do I do? Yeah. And fortunately, a lot of people who do relapse in terms of drugs and alcohol, they do know to come back to celebrate recovery. They do know that that's mm -hmm. the place to come and that they'll mm -hmm. receive, you know, the same support, the same mm -hmm. non-judgment, um, because uh, to relapse is, is common. I mean, yeah. it happens to many, many yes. people. But I always praise them that they know where to come back and get yes. plugged back in with yes. God. Yes. So it's been amazing to watch those children grow up, hasn't it? Yes. It's yes, really to see them. The 15-year-olds who we, we remember <laughs> as six-year-olds. and yes. It, it, it's been a blessing. It really has. And, and getting back to what you were saying is just because Celebrate Recovery has the word recovery in it doesn't mean that it's only drugs, alcohol. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm a survivor of childhood sexual abuse and domestic violence, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I still struggle with other life issues. Mm -hmm. And just because I've been in, in Celebrate Recovery all these years, I'm not mm -hmm. recovered. Yeah. I'll never be, like, perfect right. until he takes us home. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So it, I have did a step study, and they are thinking, well, once I do the step study, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good to go. Oh, no, girlfriend. Yeah. You've got a lot of life. Yeah. Yeah. To live and, you know, God is there for us. We just have to reach out mm -hmm. and we want, that's the first step is we have to admit that we have this issue, yeah. that we're powerless yes. without God. Yes, that's what it boils that's, down to. That's what it boils down to. And sometimes that, that step, walking yeah. through those doors at Celebrate mm -hmm. Recovery, it can be intimidating because it's admitting that you yes. have a problem in the first yes. place whatever the problem is right whether it's drugs alcohol anger yeah uh codependency um you know yep. trying to control everyone and everything yep. uh and yet it's brought you dissatisfaction in your life and you don't understand why uh that certainly was the case with me with being uh struggling with codependency uh, was trying to please everybody and realized I was pleasing nobody mm -hmm. and definitely not myself mm -hmm. because I was trying to please everybody and nobody was happy. It's like, what's yeah. wrong with this picture? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in my case, I drank. Uh -huh. I've been sober now 15 years and it took me to come to El Paso. That's why I always say the Lord wanted me in the desert for all healing. 
And you just, was it last night you got your 15-year chip? Your My 15, 14 year your 14 chip. Your 14-year uh, coin. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. We give out yes. coins. I, some of you may not have heard me mention that we give out um, coins and little chips uh, to uh, help people to remember mm -hmm. uh, that they have survived and that they have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, taken care of this issue for X number of months. Mm -hmm. we, we start at the beginning right. with take a blue chip if you're ready to lay down uh, an issue that you're struggling with, uh, and then it's 30 days, 60 days, on through a year, and then it's one, two, three, however many yeah. years, and uh, people just love those coins. It means so much to them to have something tangible to right. say that I did, I did this. this, I was able to stay away from drugs or alcohol or yeah. anger or whatever. So yes. it is powerful in it that is. way. So it God is. has been so good to our Celebrate Recovery yes. program. And um, I do want to remind everyone that um, Oscar Alvarado, who is the uh, ministry leader for Celebrate Recovery on the East Side, he is putting together a Jesus in El Paso uh, next Saturday, March 25th. Um, that will be happening at the Grace Christian Center Church, which is at 820 North Raynor. Okay. And he invites everyone to come. There is no charge. It's a worship service. And he would love for everybody to come and uh, join him in that. And uh, I hope that all of us can make it and go, yeah. too. It'll be a wonderful time, I know. And um, he, he works very hard at pulling, the, pulling Christians together here in El Paso. Yeah. So, and we need each other. We were not meant to do this this life alone, yeah. and we were meant to be in community. So, I thank you, Deb, for being um, my being my guest today and talking about Celebrate Recovery and Celebration Place specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just do such a wonderful job. Thank you. No, thank you. Let's, I appreciate uh, it. Well, you're welcome. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much for Miss Deb, as we call lovingly call her, and. I thank you for her heart for children and for pouring into them and helping to uh, snap those chains um, and, and change the direction of the way the kids' lives are going. So praise you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We praise you. Mm. Amen. Amen.